JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for April the 14th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, le let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday. It underperformed the most against NZD, SEC and AUD in that order, while it lost the least ground versus the pound and the Canadian dollar. The weakening of the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that uh, markets traded in a risk-on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that uh, major EU and US indices uh, traded in uh, positive waters with the exceptions being Spain, Cybex 35 and the Dow Jones. The rapid appetite rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Although Nikkei 225 uh, slid 0.44%, China, Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong Hang Seng gained 0.52 and 1.34% respectively. Hong Kong, uh, excuse me, South Korea's KOSPI remained uh, closed. Now, the, yesterday the main economic release was the US CPIs for March. The headline rate jumped to 2.6% year over year from 1.7%, while the core one rose to 1.6% from 1.3%. The US dollar spiked higher at the time of the release, but it was quick to give back those gains and to continue to trade lower throughout the rest of the day. This may have been the case due to market participants eventually believing the Fed's view that any spikes in inflation this year are, li are likely to prove to be temporary and that it is too early to start discussing policy normalization. As we noted several times recently, this is likely to keep the US dollar under selling interest while it may allow equities to continue trending north. Now, as for today, during the Asian session, we had an RBNZ monetary policy decision with policymakers keeping their policy settings untouched. In the statement accompanying the decision, officials maintained the position that uh, they remain prepared to lower the official cash rate further if required, while noting that a prolonged period of time is most likely to pass before their objectives are met. The Kiwi barely reacted uh, at the time of the release, perhaps because this is the outcome most market participants may have been expecting and continued to, to march north, uh, driven by the improvement in the, bro in the broader market sentiment. Now, as uh, for the rest of today's events, during the European session, we have Eurozone's industrial production for February, which is expected to have contracted 1.1% month over month after expanding 0.8% in January. Later in the day, from the US, the Energy Formation Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week is coming out, and the forecast points to a 2.889 million barrels decline following a 3.522 million slide the week before. As for tonight, during the, Asia, the, during the Asia session Thursday, we get Australia's employment report for March. The unemployment rate is forecast to have uh, ticked down to 5.7% uh, from 5.8%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has gained 35,000 jobs after adding 88,700 in February. A slowdown following February's strong jobs growth appears more than normal to us and thus we would consider this to be a decent report. At this month's gathering, the RBA kept its policy unchanged, repeating that the economic recovery in Australia is well underway and that it is stronger than uh, had been expected. 
Therefore, a decent employment report would add credits to that view and may diminish even further the chances for this bank to ease policy further in the foreseeable future. This is likely to prove positive for the Australian dollar. We also have eight speakers on today's agenda, and those are ECB President Christine Lagarde, ECB Executive Board Member Fabio Panetta, ECB Executive Board Member Isabel Schnabel, Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee Member Jonathan, ha Jonathan Haskell, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarida, New York Fed President John Williams, and Atlanta Fed President uh, Rafael Bostic. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.